Hey, what is up Design Squad? Welcome back to another Tuesday and another Design Tool Tuesday, where I usually share something really awesome for designers, UX designers, content makers and creators, you name it. But it's all about making better experience and designing them and what could improve it. And today I want to share with you a very simple uh, directory of best or really good email examples. It has to do with copy, it has to do with call to action elements and so forth. And it's a collection of almost 6,000 emails. And as you can see on my screen right now, there are quite a few examples and it's all visual and good. It's all great content. And what really makes good email, you're gonna, it's going to resonate a lot of, let's say, our best practices in shaping any other UI mockup, for example. So connecting visual design of good, simple hierarchy content for customer and company, consistency, emails that convert, accessible stuff. But let's take a look at the examples before you dive in. You can make your own choice. So you can see, let's just sort it by popular, let's say. Strava is what I like. I'm a user of Strava and I usually tend to look at their emails. It's simple headlines, big, bold, a few different call to action elements about learning more, some news about the developments, what's improved with their tool, because that's what people actually care. Some imagery to inspire different articles, things of that nature. That's pretty good email. Very simple, very straightforward. They're saying that looks are not everything. They ran their own litmus test. For example, the technical aspects of a meta content types, it's very well structured. The content hierarchy, like the headlines, uh, subtext, call to action elements, all well structured. And but there are also some negatives. So you can get a glimpse exactly, for example, how it looks like on different devices. So you can check exactly what's not good. So this is quite technical. For example, lang attribute is not present, left justified paragraphs, which are large, I can agree with that this is really hard to read, for example, right now, yada, 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 you know, you want to avoid this as much as possible. This is not too bad, because it's a few lines, just two sentences. But sometimes when you have a lot of text, I guess if this is the only culprit on this email, you just tend to forget about these things. And in the end, it looks good because it's everything is centered. Hooray, you know, happy days for designers who came up with this content, but not so much for the end user for a customer. And you as a designer, you can like it, you know, give it a smiley face, you can collect it. So add it into your new collection. So for example, this is going to be let's call my basket for these new collections like that, I'm going to create it. And boom, let's say for all the product new features, I'm going to use that similar inspiration template and this use case for better copy, call to action elements, visuals, and you know, general representation. And another bit, what you can check is the code. Now, this is what I like myself, because it's quite technical, you might not be experienced designing emails and and making, you know, HTML and CSS adapt to different bits, making it responsive, I had headaches back in the day when I just started because I worked with marketing, let's say, crafting different emails, but you can immediately see how they structure it with tables, because a lot of markup for different emails still uses tables and table tags. And so you as a designer, let's say if you still support marketing, and you do visual stuff or content design stuff, you might need to dig deeper, but you can at least refer to it. Now let's pick another example, because this is quite interesting. Let's pick something very different and a bit more wordy, let's say like this one, this looks very solid, very serious, uh, because it comes from let's say scientific newsletters, it's very wordy, I like that, you know, it, it has substance, it's not just uh, very superficial, high level stuff. And you can preview how it would look like on different devices as well. That's not too different, because it's similar structure, it's very basic structure. That's exactly what you're users are after. So this email definitely does better than Strava's email, it has alt text, it has lang attributes, things of that nature, the technical bits are actually good. I mean, it's straight to the point, a few call to action elements, just as you can see big button here, a uh, secondary button, meaning this is the key message, the key article and news bit. And the other one is an, a, you know, an assistive contextual bit, which some people might refer to. That's quite simple. Let's pick yet another one. What could be even different? Let's see this visual bit, which looks like a, you know, a brochure, a banner, which you could see on printouts, but it's for Oculus. And you know, Oculus is all about that immersive VR experience and their headsets and their technology. And as you can see, it's all about upselling different products. Uh, some sales materials, very promotional email, but looks pretty damn 
sound good if you ask me. I like that it's very different. It's dark theme. You know, it automatically stands out in your email client, you know, in your inbox. You could question if it's good or not. Very simple outcomes again on accessibility. I'm just going to open it in Outlook and how our users would see it. As you can see, it's pretty damn good. It has like big headlines, subtext explanation exactly what each of a section is. So like a subsection. Okay, this is for quest users. This is Rift. The last one is Oculus Go. So there are product lines of three different products. Very visual, very VR ish. I mean, it's very easy to pull up these type of emails if you already have content from your games, let's say it would be a bad choice not to include these bits, which actually act as a you know, I want to do this, I want to purchase that device to actually experience something like that and see those visuals uh, first hand. But that's one of the different emails. And I can see a lot of different good and not so good copy here micro copy. I mean, this is Black Friday email. So it's straight to the point. At that point, there is a lot of noise in your inbox and generally in the market. And so you might want to be straight to the point. The other bit what I liked was sorting by category. So let's say if I don't know, you're supporting marketing or you're content designing, writing a copy for it, making visuals for a newsletter for yourself or your client or your boss, you would probably want to sort it by purpose. For example, if I want to design an onboarding experience, one of the touch points is definitely an email, which is definitely going to be the case. Well, I'm going to go here and just get inspired of what to do about it. And let's say if I want to do something like retention reactivation on a separate side of the spectrum, I might want to do something like this, which is incentivizes users to keep on opting into the app, keep on using it, checking it, things of that nature, maybe discounts, deals, things of that nature to minimize the churn rate of people escaping. And then you have promotions, which is typical product update and new features. It's something I started saving just now, if, if you remember, but as you can see, you can upsell different features. But these are some of the best examples out there. And I like that, you know, you can also submit your own or for example, something you found really good and save it as well for later use. It's a pool of knowledge of experiences of ways to solve problems in a meaningful way and good way and proven way as well. And so you can get this tool at reallygoodemails.com. If you like this video, give a like, subscribe to his channel. And on that note, I'll see you next time.